So now the question is, well, why don't we just do lasso, right? So if if it if it is giving us um, benefits in terms of uh, you know the the pushing the values to exactly zero, why would anyone even want to do ridge when lasso is easy? Uh, well, there are some advantages of doing ridge still uh, than lasso. Uh, I mean, uh, let me point out a few things. Um, one thing is that uh, one points some points. Um, Point number one is that lasso does not have a closed form solution. Remember, our ridge regression had a closed form solution. Um, ridge ridge closed form solution uh, was x x transpose plus lambda i inverse x transpose y. Right, so it was a closed form solution. Whereas lasso, you cannot say that well, I cannot take the derivative set it to zero, um, simply because the problem itself is not, you know, exactly differentiable at, at zero. Right, so your your penalty is not a differentiable function. So you cannot take the gradient set it to zero and solve for it. Um, so how do we solve this problem? Well, you can use uh, um, what are called as subgradient methods. are usually used to solve lasso. Uh, remember our gradient methods uh, were just uh, following the negative gradient direction. Um, now for problems where differentiation is an issue, right, so where you cannot take the gradient all, at all points. Um, you can still solve the problem using an iterative method if uh, instead of the gradient, uh, something called as a subgradient exists. Um, a subgradient is equivalent to a gradient if a gradient is present at a point. If not, it is um, it is a direction where the function is completely lower bounded in that direction, right? So, um, so I'll just give you some examples as to what subgradients are. Uh, we won't get into too much detail about subgradients, but just to give give you some sense of how subgradients look like. Um, let's say you have a point. You have some function like this, right? So this is uh, this is a piecewise linear function, right? So you you see there are different pieces of this function at different points. Um, now at this point. Right, so at this point of the input, um, let's say this is x. Now, there are two pieces which are intersecting at this point, and um, the problem is there is no, it's not differentiable at this point. Um, so there is no gradient that you can find for this point. Uh, but then a subgradient is like, you know, some line, right? So some way to approximate this function at this point, which is completely lower bounding the function. Right, so if if the function is completely lower bounded at this point, um, for example, this is one subgradient. Uh, maybe here is another subgradient. The, as you, as you can see, there are multiple subgradients here uh, for the same point. Um, if if you can compute such subgradients, if your function has such subgradients at every point, um, for example, at this point, it's a different point. Um, the only subgradient that you will have at this point is this itself, this line itself. No other line can completely lower bound this function at every point. Whereas at these meeting points, there might be multiple lines, right? So these are called as subgradients. Um, the blue one is also called a subgradient, but then because it's differentiable at this point, it's also called as a gradient, right? So if there is only one subgradient, well, typically that's the gradient, right? So um, that's kind of telling you how the function is slope. You can think of it as a slope, right? So in one dimensional case. Um, so why is it this relevant for us? Because the L2 penalty has uh, uh, is of is like this, right? So it's an absolute value function. Absolute value function looks like this, right? So it, it looks like this. Uh, this is x. This is absolute value of x. And then you can think of it like two pieces of uh, linear functions I mean, attached at this point. So it is not differentiable at this point, uh, but it has subgradients, right? So for example, this line is a subgradient, this line is a subgradient. Well, this line itself is a subgradient, this line itself is a subgradient, right? So 
all these lines have slopes and all of these slopes are subgradients right so it has multiple subgradients at this point in fact uh, the subgradient at, at sub gradient will just be uh, the slope for one dimensional function at uh, 0 is any value between minus 1 and 1 minus 1 is this slope 1 is this slope so anybody between minus 1 and 1 any line a line with such a slope will lower bound this function absolute value completely and it's called a subgradient right so um, so let me quickly give you the definition of subgradient and then we'll close this discussion so subgradient uh, I, I just intuitively said uh, what subgradient is but um, you can think of uh, subgradient as a vector some vector in d dimension um, is a subgradient of some function f which is r d to r at a point x in r t if for every value of z if the function's value is greater than the value at f of x plus g transpose z minus x which just means that if you if you linearize this function at x right so um, then the function um, uh, linearize using the subgradient g then the function is completely above this linearization right so that's what this means right so that's precisely what this means so this um, again so if you want the example that we saw earlier right so we had function like this and at this point it's not differentiable but then at any z right so i can let's say i draw this function now i take some z the function itself takes the value f of z here so this is f of z now if this is the slope is g then this value is just f of x plus g times z minus x right so that's what this value would be and you can see that f of z is above this right so it's always above this now no matter which z i pick wherever i pick z well the function is always above the blue line and if you can find such a g that satisfies this for all z then that's a subgradient now what's the use of uh, subgradient well uh, here is the reason why subgradients are useful uh, y subgradients well if the function f to minimize is a convex function then subgradient descent is an algorithm that one can use instead of gradient descent and this algorithm also converges what does this mean this means that if your function is nice then instead of well even if it's not differentiable if it is nice in the sense that it's convex even if the function is not differentiable you can still converge to the minimum of this function by moving along the negative of the subgradient as opposed to the gradient of course there are multiple subgradients possible at a given point where it is not differentiable it doesn't really matter which subgradient you pick you can pick one arbitrary subgradient and move along the negative of that subgradient direction and then if the function is convex then one can argue that a subgradient descent algorithm will also converge to the optimal solution why is this relevant for us well it is relevant for us because the lasso problem is a convex problem it is the loss function is quadratic the norm l1 norm is a convex function so the sum of convex functions is convex and so the lasso problem itself is a convex optimization problem and finding the minimum of a convex optimization problem you can now use something like a subgradient descent um, by no means this is the only way to solve this uh, lasso problem there are other specialized uh, methods uh, that one can use to solve the lasso problem um, so we won't look at those methods but i will just point out that um, uh, there are other methods special purpose methods because this is a special quadratic loss plus uh, uh, plus uh, l1 uh, penalty now you can develop special purpose methods to solve this problem right so for lasso 
uh, one example is what is called as IRLS, um, which is the iterative uh, reweighted least squares method. Um, again, we won't really look at this problem, uh, this, this method in this course, um, but essentially the idea is that we can solve least squares easily, right? So least squares is the original linear regression problem. We know how to solve in closed form. Now you can use the use that as some kind of a black box to solve the lasso problem. And now uh, essentially this is, you know, taking advantage of the structure in the lasso problem that it is a linear regression problem plus a penalty. And you can do special purpose things like IRLS, which can be used to solve this problem. That's one thing. Or you can use a general purpose subgradient descent algorithm by noting that our function, loss function plus pen penalty, the lasso objective is in fact convex. It may not be differentiable, but it's convex. And so you can use subgradient descent methods. So all these are okay. Uh, just that we have to be aware that there is no closed form solution to the lasso problem. And that's the main summary of this, this part of the, uh, you know, uh, discussion. Um, there is no closed form solution to lasso, so we cannot, uh, you know, hope that given the data and uh, labels, we can simply get a closed form value for W. We have to do some work, um, and that is important to keep in mind. Though you will get a sparse solution and all that, uh, it, it is not as straightforward as solving a ridge regression problem. Ridge, on the other hand, is gives you a nice closed form solution. Uh, you can do a stochastic gradient descent also if you wish if you have large data size n or large d and so on. But for me, for, uh, you know, small values, you can just use a closed form solution. Small values of n and d, you can use the closed form solution. Whereas in lasso, there is no closed form solution. And so you have to rely on, you know, either optimization techniques like subgradient descent or special purpose methods like IRLS. Okay, uh, so so with this, uh, we, we kind of conclude our discussion about uh, the regression problem. I just wanted to summarize at a high level whatever we have seen so far in regression, um, and then we'll move on to uh, the next part of the course. Um, in regression, uh, we noted that, uh, you know, you can solve a least squares um, objective, which is a squared loss, and that had a closed form solution. We looked at its geometric interpretation. We looked at its computational um, discussion, uh, we had a discussion and we came up with the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Uh, then we noted that, well, if you give it a probabilistic twist, then the linear regression with squared loss is same as the maximum likelihood estimator. Um, now, because it's a maximum likelihood estimator, then we can ask, well, is there a Bayesian counterpart to this? And that gave us the linear regression plus regularized version, which is the ridge regression problem where you used an L2 regularizer which was equivalent to a Gaussian prior with zero mean on the W itself. Um, and then we noted that well, the, while the L2 regularizer is good in pushing Ws to close to zero, it may not make it exactly zero. Now to make it exactly zero, then we looked at the geometry of the problem and said that well, maybe an L1 regularizer is better. And that gave us the lasso problem, the least absolute shrinkage selection operator algorithm, which is the loss, squared loss plus an L1 regularizer. And um, we also had a small discussion about how to solve the lasso problem involving subgradients and uh, other techniques, perhaps like the IRLS. Now, this is the overall summary of uh, linear regression. Um, I also wanted to point out that, you know, people use all sorts of regularizer. There are mixed lasso plus ridge regularizer called the elastic net penalty and so on. So there is a whole, you know, um, you know, cottage industry of regularizers where if you think your W should satisfy some nice constraint, maybe W has some group structure in the sense that you collect features from a lot of places, but you know that some features should either be positive or uh, sorry, either be uh, selected together or not be selected together. These, these are domain specific constraints that might come up. And then you can convert them into, you know, regularizers and then try to solve the problem in a regularized fashion. All these are things that people have studied. Um, what, we have, what we have looked at in this course is some basic type of regularizers, which are very popular, which are most commonly used. Uh, but then you also should, as machine learning practitioners, you also should know that in case if your domain knowledge tomorrow in your problem that you try to solve, you, you have some domain knowledge which say something more about the structure of the solution that you expect to see, then you can 
perhaps convert that into a more meaningful regularizer than simply using a ridge or a lasso penalty. Uh, with this, we will complete our discussion about uh, regression in this course and we will move on to the next part of the course where we will talk about supervised learning uh, but from a classification point of view. Thank you.